What is going on friends? Welcome on back to the Let's Play World. And man, thank you guys so much for all the love and support you guys have been showing me on this series. I am really enjoying taking a break from Hardcore. Although, I didn't die in the Hardcore world, so expect an episode from there pretty soon. Besides that, if you're just joining, last episode we built up this completely custom island, which is full of farmland and an awesome looking windmill. Windmill, I'm sorry, I know I always say windmill. Besides that, there is a little bit more work that needs to be done to this island, but we're gonna do that a little bit later today. Because I want to head back up to the Lush Cave. Currently, the storage situation is getting a little bit out of hand. Everything's just getting really disorganized. And the longer I hold off on organizing all of that stuff, the worse it's gonna get. Meaning I'm just never gonna wanna organize it ever. So today I wanna continue expanding this lush cave a little bit and making my way over to this area. I think this location right here is gonna be the perfect spot for a storage room. And also a pretty big one too. Besides that, there's also this little spaghetti cave and if I go all the way up it, it makes its way to the surface. Yep, all the way to the top. I think it'd be really cool to transform this cave into a pathway coming up to the surface here, and maybe in the future we can build some stuff up here. This cave is gonna need a lot of work though, because currently it's really, really, really small, and also it's pretty long too. But before we can get started building, I'm gonna need to clear out a little bit of area, because this, this right here isn't gonna work, nor is this. Well, this part of the cave isn't too bad. It's mainly just up there where it gets really small. And also, we have another part of the cave. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it, so you you guys let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. It means the world to me. Jumping straight into the demo phase, I started off by clearing out most of the blocks where the storage room is gonna go, mainly because I wanna give myself a good idea of how big I can actually build this thing. I don't need it to have hundreds of chests, but I do want it to be able to last me a pretty long time. Luckily, if I do need to expand it in the future, I do have a few more blocks behind me that I can always dig out. But for now, this should be a plenty big enough space. Once I had the main storage room dug out, I got started on the cave. I decided to start up at the top just because it was gonna need a little bit more work. So slowly making my way down this, I widened it out piece by piece. And there is definitely going to need to be a lot of detail work done. And I'm super glad I started with digging all this out because I'm going to need to smelt all this cobblestone into stone so then I can come through and smoothen out some of the harsher curves with some stone stairs and stone slabs. With the top half of the cave complete, I made my way down to the second half of it. This didn't involve much work because it was already pretty wide. Although it did take quite a beating on my pickaxe. Oh, I see you up there. Let's see if I can get him to drop down up there. There he goes. Yep, yep. There we go. With my looting sword, give me some bones. I want bone meal. I have a strange addiction to bone meal, if you couldn't tell. Now, while I wait for all my stone to smelt up, I want to go on a little bit of an adventure. And sort of a dangerous one, too. Because I need some, some, obviously, bone meal. And I haven't found a skeleton spawner yet, so I think the next best option is to go to the nether. And you may be wondering, what's in the nether? Well, if I can find myself a soul sand valley, there is tons of fossils, which are made out of bone blocks. And each one of those bone blocks gives you nine bone meal. Pretty much the only thing I'm gonna need is obsidian. Oh, there's a tree there. And luckily, there's a lava pool right down here that we found back in episode one. Yep, right here. I am so excited to mine 10 pieces of obsidian. Can't you tell? Okay, that really wasn't that bad. I kind of forgot how fast you can mine that stuff when you have efficiency four. Anyways, time to sleep. Now, when it comes to where I should put this portal, I think I actually want to put it in this cave. For now, it's going to be a little bit ugly. And I actually, you know, this is a perfect spot right here. As I was saying, for now, it's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world, but I'll come back through and make it look a little better later. I did not just do that. I did not mean to do that. We all know three by three portals are better than the normal one. Do we have a flint steel? Yeah, I do. If I were to say I wasn't terrified right now, that would be a complete lie. I mean, this isn't hardcore, so it's not too bad, but it, it's still a little terrifying. Please spawn me in a soul sand valley, please. No basalt delta, no basalt delta. Okay, that is not horrible. Oh, I'm, whoa, 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 that's not cool. I realized I forgot something. I need gold boots. And time for take two. First things first, while I'm in here, I definitely got to get this sorted out. Let me just put a block right there and also take a photo of the coordinates real quick. And also, since it's right here and so easy to collect, I might as well grab all this glowstone. Along with the quartz. I kind of forgot how much experience quartz gives you. I mean, oh, oh, whoa, 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 I don't like that. I did bring a bone arrow, luckily. Let me take this guy out. Ooh, I blocked it, that was cool. One more shot, one, oh, I missed that. Come on, come on, right 
there. Got him. I'm not gonna worry about looking for that ghast here. As I was saying, yeah, I forgot how much experience this stuff gives you. I mean, I'm already up to level 32. Ooh, don't mind trying to kill some magma cubes. Maybe I can get some cream. I'm so glad I have looting on this sword. I already got four magma cream. Okay, now it's time to continue searching for a soul sand valley. Is, is that what I think it is? I think that is a soul sand valley way over there. I was just about to run the other way because it all looked like basalt delta. Okay, I need to go down first and make my way back up. Oh yeah, that's definitely a soul sand valley. And that's also a ghast. And that is exactly what we're looking for. I'm also gonna collect up a little bit of soul sand too, just so I don't forget. How did he see me from this far away? I don't even know if my bow can shoot that far. Let's try this shot. Does that, nope, that's way off. How about, oh, he's going behind that. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna drop down here now. Hopefully I'm hidden from him. Oh, there's one right there. Please give me up, did it give me a ghast here? No way you can see me from here, no way. I'm just gonna peacefully collect this stuff up. Oh my goodness, I didn't even realize that. That's a bastion right there, I think. Yeah, that's definitely a bastion. Okay, that that's scary looking. I gotta watch out for the guys who dress in black because they're the dangerous ones and that's also dangerous. I don't know how much of this I really want to explore. Honestly, I think I might just have to come back to this a little later because I don't feel quite prepared. Maybe once I have some diamond armor and maybe a little bit better of a sword, we can explore it. You do not shoot at me. Oh, I missed. Besides that, I do now have over a stack of bone blocks, tons of quartz, and some soul sand, so I think I'm ready to get on out of here. And I'm back at the portal, so let's head back home. I was able to kill a few gas with my sword, so I ended up getting six gas tiers, which is really cool because when it comes to killing the ender dragon, those regen potions are gonna be great. Besides that, as you guys can see, I'm now up to level 34, which means I can do a little bit of enchanting. Although I only have six diamonds to my name, so I can either choose to make a piece of armor or try enchanting another shovel, pickaxe, or sword. And you know, I can also try doing a bow. Considering one of my pickaxes is almost broken, I think I'm gonna use three diamonds to make a new one and it's showing efficiency four. So let's go for it. And that is another great pickaxe. That is literally a mirror image of this one. And the book is showing sweeping edge, which I am definitely gonna do. Well, that is a really good book. Although I don't have an anvil yet, so I'll have to craft one real quick so I can put that book on my sword. Why do anvils have to be so expensive? I mean, three iron, wait, did I, I did that wrong. Oh, it's like that, it's like that. Okay, I get it now. I'll just put that right there. And that is gonna cost me eight levels, but I am gonna go for it. And that's sword is insane. I'd really love to get that looting two up to looting three though. I think that would be awesome. Oh yeah, and by the way, I saw someone say in the comments that I killed the pillager. Well, I didn't. The one I killed was a different one. Come on, I would never kill that guy with the fox. He's my friend. Besides that, I do want to harvest up some of the crops because they're not really doing me any good when they're just fully grown. Luckily, you guys told me use my fortune axe when harvesting it because I will get more crops from it. And this is always so satisfying. And this part isn't so satisfying, it's really boring. Not only did I come down here to harvest the crops, but I also have a bunch of building blocks that are scattered in all of these chests. So I had to grab all of that. I told you that I really needed a storage room because those aren't the only chests that are like that. Now that I have a ton of building blocks together, I kind of have to decide on what I want to start first, the storage room or the pathway going through the cave. I think I'm going to start on the storage room just because I know I'm going to have to craft a lot of random blocks when it comes to building the pathway. And I rather have a storage room when I do that. For starters, I wanted the main structure to have an arch to it. I really want to carry on this look of it looking like a dwarven cave. And for some reason, I think arches make it look like that. I decided to use spruce for the main part of it and then fill in some of the gaps with bricks. I think brick is going to be the perfect color to offset all of the brown that's going to be in this build. I wanted this building to mainly be spruce because I think it gives it a little bit of a mine look. So using spruce slabs and spruce logs for the ceiling, I filled it in. And also right in the middle, I decided to do glowstone to help give this place plenty of lighting. And obviously covering up the glowstone with trapdoors because I think glowstone is kind of an ugly block. I would love to be able to use sea lanterns in this build because the blue would look really nice up against the brick and the brown spruce logs, but I currently don't have a good way to get those. Besides that, I also wanted to 
split the chest up in three by three groups. So each one of these little sections is gonna have nine double chests. And once both sides are filled in, we're gonna have a total of 72 double chests, which is probably more than I'm ever gonna need. Also, when it came to the floor, I wanted to use a combination of rooted dirt and coarse dirt. By using both of these blocks, you can add a nice texture to it. And also I think it's a great tone of brown that kind of fits up against the spruce. I really thought I had enough spruce wood to craft all these chests, but I guess I don't. Now I could use some of the oak or dark oak that I have or even birch, but I'm choosing not to because it's so much more difficult to collect up than spruce wood. So time to make a quick trip and collect up a few of these trees. Hopefully just over a stack and a half of logs should be plenty enough. Oh my goodness, that is so satisfying. I crafted the perfect amount of chests that I needed. And also I think I'm gonna have plenty of storage for quite a long time. Next comes the hard part. I need to figure out a way to sort this whole place out and have it make sense, which is always very difficult to do. I think for now I'm just gonna do signs and I can kind of name what's in each chest below it. Now there is a few of these rows that are all gonna be one type of block because something like dirt, you're always gonna have a lot of, or at least most of the time. So like this will be dirt, this will be stone, this will probably probably be deep slate and then I'll be able to split all the woods up into a three by three area and kind of work from there. That's gonna be something I do in between episodes though because I don't think you guys really want to watch that. Besides that there is a little bit more work to be done outside because right now it's looking a little bit plain and I think the perfect solution to that problem, oh, I, I got stuck there, is gonna be adding in some moss. I probably should have done this before I placed the coarse dirt in because some of it is gonna change into moss blocks. Luckily we have um, lots lots of bone meal which I love so I can just do something a little bit like this and kind of have it meander its way over. Do need to steal one of these though, so I can also put it on this side. That is exactly what I mean. Already that's helping a lot, and then I think I want to take one of these pillars and turn it into an amethyst pillar. We got to stick with the mystical vibe. Before I do so, I also want to get started on this pathway, so by stealing a few more pieces of moss, I can come through and start bone mealing its way down this entire cave. For now, I'm just gonna do all of it and then I can come back through a little later with the coarse dirt and rooted dirt just to add that pathway in. This is a little too chaotic for my liking, so I'm also gonna get rid of all this tall grass and all of these saplings. Did you know when you bone meal moss next to cobblestone, it won't turn the cobblestone into moss? I had no idea that was a thing, but it, I'm glad I know it now. Um, where where did you come from? Oh, wow, I did not know this was one hit. Oh, he must have fallen and that's what made it one hit. Next up for this cave, I wanna get started on the actual coarse dirt pathway. And so first off, I'm just gonna get rid of a one block wide area, a little bit something like that, and then I can fill it in with coarse dirt just to give myself a little bit of an outline. And I'm gonna do this all the way up to the top. A little bit something like that. Now that I have the outline complete, I can now come through and widen this thing out just a little bit. I don't want the pathway to be super wide, but I do want it to look proportional to the size of the cave. And I do plan on riding horses up and down through here, so it can't be too small. I was originally planning on texturing it with coarse dirt and rooted dirt, but I think I might just leave the coarse dirt for now. If I add the rooted dirt in, it might look like a little bit too much is going on, especially once I start adding the glow lichen on the walls and also all the amethyst. And then using because I really don't want to have to hold spacebar and do this the entire way. Taking a quick break from building up that cave, I just wanted to show you guys how pretty this view is. This might be one of my favorite parts about building in this cave, is that every day you get to see the sunset right here. Yes, I'm really praising the sunset in a video game, but tell me that doesn't look awesome. Besides that, it's time to sleep. Now that we have the coarse dirt in and also the moss, the cave is starting to look a whole lot better. Although there is a few things that still need to be done, like the lighting still isn't great in here. I've hidden a few torches underneath some of the moss carpet, but obviously not enough. So using a bunch of my iron, I'm 
going to craft uh, 34 lanterns and also a ton of spruce fences so I can sort of place these through the cave and give it a little bit more light because I really prefer not to have any torches at all. Um, you're, you're, you're not supposed to be here. What are you doing here, bud? All right, I'm just going to let them wander the cave. If I had a name tag, I would put them on them and put them in a boat, but I don't have any of those yet. Anyways, that should be plenty of enough lanterns. So now I just need to start working on detailing the walls. First off, by adding in some glow like it, which I really don't have any of, so I'm going to put that on the wall and start bone mealing it. Hopefully that should be enough, so I'm just going to harvest all of this. And now I can just kind of go through and scatter this on the walls and also on the ceiling, which is really nice because it's always hard to detail ceilings. Another cool little trick I can do is using some rooted dirt and bone mealing underneath it to give us some roots. And if I do this all throughout the cave, it's going to add a bunch of detail. The only problem is that's kind of a harsh transition. Already the cave is looking much, much better, but I think it could use a little bit of amethyst clumps. I'm not sure how much I have, so we might have to go down to the geode and harvest some up. Actually, I think 25 should do the trick, and I also have 19 purple stained glass, which I can kind of mix in with it. Okay, this is looking so cool right now. Adding that pop of color with the amethyst brightens this place up so much. I feel like there's a few more things we can do to this cave, but for now, I'm gonna wait on it. Mainly because I am all out of time for today's episode. And yes, I know it's a very, very short one, but I'm currently moving out of my old apartment into my new place right now. And for those of you guys who have moved before, I'm sure you know how hard it is to do that. Currently, I'm in my brand new studio that I'm putting a bunch of sound detonating paneling in. It's still a little echoey, I'm sure you guys can tell, but it's not too terrible. There's more work to be done. I promise this is only a one-time thing. I'm almost done with all this studio stuff. And once I do have it complete, oh my goodness, the audio is gonna be insane. Besides that, thank you guys so much for tuning into today's episode and I will see you in the next one.